We go down in the water baptism buried. We ride, you come back, you bury one man, an old man, and you bring back a new man. Just in the twinkling of an eye, it happens in baptism. Buried with Christ, Romans 6 and 4, if I am correct. Buried with Christ, by what? By baptism, that like is Christ, was raised from the dead for the glory of the Father. We rise. We come out of the water. We walk in the newness of life. Now there's some men in you much smarter. You don't have to be smart to learn this. You just have to be honest. Preach what you read and don't condemn nothing God said. In baptism, our sins are washed away. Not at the moment, bench. I don't see why... These great colleges that we have among the sectarian people don't find this. I met a man not long ago. He said, Kibo, we're going to start preaching that this way. He was a Baptist. But I don't know what he started or not. I haven't heard it of him. But do you know we're going to have to learn that the Bible says that baptism washes my sins away. Now, what he means by washes does away with them. They're all gone in baptism. You are not to go home till you complete your obedience. Thank God that the scales has fallen from your eyes. Thank God that your understanding has been developed. And that you understand it just like it says, word for word. John the Baptist, he baptized people, but he didn't use no ceremony. But did you know God made the man and he made the law? He made the law and sent the apostles out to tell the world that Jesus died. Tell them how the blood was shed and then tell them the blood was shed in his death and tell them this baptism that you're teaching bears him into the death of Christ where the blood was shed. The blood was shed in the death and we're baptized into the death, Romans 6 and 4. But I can understand it and I know all of y'all can. I don't want you to think I've been to college either. I better pause right here for station, I then at the kitchen. What do you mean by that at this station? This is coming over on station COC. What is that, Church of Christ? The only station in the world preaching the gospel just like I'm trying to preach it tonight. Because I know this is a station. Who is the announcer? Jesus Christ. Who is the board of directors of the twelve apostles? I didn't read this in no book either. I reasoned this out by the way the Bible reads. Twelve men started out on the day of Pentecost. Holy Ghost, general manager, apostles, the board of directors. But I'm trying to organize the church and get you to understand this. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the best organized organization in the world. Completely finished. I ain't boast. It's bragging. Yeah, that's right. I am. I ain't going to boast a bit, but I think the Apostle Paul, I'd be in the grounds of a, a writer. He said, let him boast. He has to be permitted to boast a little bit. But I want to tell you now, friends, I'm awfully proud that I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I'm awful proud that I learned how to be baptized in what for? And the thousands of people that I've baptized, every one of them, for the same thing that Ananias told us all the time. And some of them now preaching the gospel like I taught them, and they're baptizing people for the same thing. And this wonderful organization here. You talk about integration. You're really trying to get every person saved from the least to the greatest. I'm so impressed. I'm stronger since I've been here. I see the Spirit of Christ demonstrated. I wish every church of Christ in America and throughout the world would preach it and hold it up like you, the elders of this congregation need praise. The minister needs praise. All the members need praise. I see a complete church of Christ. I believe the church of Christ is preaching it just like it's written. And men and women's eyes are coming open. And we understand the gospel as never before. Brother B.C. Goodpatch is now has Brother Schultz, who is now on the directive. Brother Schultz is on there writing this book. And Brother B.C. Goodpatch is getting it out for him. He may tell him to get it out. 
And he said, people, I praise your work. I just think it ought to be written in a book somewhere and left you on record. That's your God. Well, I didn't know how to do it that way. I just thought I was just preaching it for the salvation of souls. But I want to tell you this. That when the apostles were here on earth, they baptized the people like Jesus told them. Buried. Buried with baptism. Down in the water of baptism, we can't touch Jesus. One character during his personal ministry on earth just turns to him of his God. Is that right? Amen. He you. Paul, Peter, and John went up to the temple to out prayer. Lay man laying on the steps of the temple. He's asking for alms. He got something he didn't ask for. Peter said, we haven't got what you want. You're looking for money. John and I are broke. Uh, every gospel preacher, preacher broke, I never would met one but And if the church of Christ has to feed him, you stay broke. You won't get rich in the church of Christ preaching, now. that's a settled fact. But Peter said to him, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the Bible said, without a prayer, any morning or anything, the man comes sleeping and praising God. It's a wonderful story. My faith grows better and stronger every time I repeat those things. You'll get stronger as you repeat them. And as you read them, you'll go stronger. And I'm so happy tonight to know that those things are written that for our life, so we can understand what to tell the people of the age we're now living. If there ever was a time that the word needs taught, being taught like it ought, it's right now. It's right now that people are in an attitude or disturbed condition that they'll take it like it's written. They will. They just want it in right. Did you know you can go to the store now? And you can trade better and easier than you ever traded in your life. You don't have to see nobody asking the price or nothing. Everything's laid. Amen. Amen. Wait on yourself. Roll your little basket around and get everything you But be sure to check out at the counter. <laughs> <laughs> and they got another thing down at the counter. The lady or the gym man, whoever's there at the ad machine, just touches it like that. And if she said ten dollars, you might well go on out. That's right. That's, that's, they'll tell you that thing don't lie. And when you come up fighting this, I'll tell you this don't lie. Amen. This is God's hand and machine. Mm, that's right. Tell me, tell me, take this. You have to take that head and machine down there at the store. It ain't doing nothing to do this like that. Now it wants to hit the final lick. Well, that's the answer. <laughs> Hundred dollars and you don't, you stood out there without an argument. He said, oh, boy, you don't tell him to wait and let me see now. Let's count this up. Beautiful. That's killing time. <laughs> killing time. You're running the man's business. <clears throat> Brother, and I'll tell you, this is getting plainer every day to me. The gospel of Christ is plainer tonight than I've ever had it in my life. The more you deal with it, the better you like it. That's what you do at these stores. Think of the weekly, or you don't have it now, but these chain stores, all of that. When they hit that last lick and then get you the total, go on home. You got it. And when you go down in baptism for the wash your sins away, don't need an offering. That's what the machine says. That's final. What is the machine? The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God made Adam and Eve, but he couldn't make them till he made the material out of which to make them. He had to have dirt. He had to have water to make the dirt stick. <clears throat> that's, all, that's all right. Ain't nobody going to bother that, Brother James. No. <laughs> he made Adam and Eve, made just one, and then comes back down to the rib out of that last one and made her. She's doing right well with him, too. <laughs> did you know, did you know, did you know, brother? The simplest thing in the world, and the best thing in the world, is the knowledge of the Bible. Greatest book in the world. You don't have to be a fool walking around. Just read that thing. 
You don't have to go to college. I ain't been to nothing. I never got higher than the seventh grade in my life. Then I don't know if I was good in that. <laughs> but the thing of it is, somebody like God and somebody like Jesus has had a hope too. I know that. I know why somebody's had some superpower. Go through the world like this, say what I say, nobody bothers me. Why? It's right. And I try to say it without boasting. Brother, I believe there are people here tonight going to respond to the invitation because I tried to make it clear. Did you know I want to say this? You all look nice tonight. Nice ties. Shirts is white. But you know what you really are? A big lump of dirt said not to have a necktie on. <laughs> That's all. You ain't so much after all. That's all you are. You ladies might be dressed in silk. But you're just a lump of dirt. If we ever recognize just what we are, we'll all be a little more humble. Just a lump of dirt dressed up. And look pretty nice. It's wonderful for us. It, God is able to do that. God's able. And he has done it. Made us out of the dust of the earth. And then he, he didn't make a did he, he didn't make the man. He, he made the man rather, but he didn't make the woman. He, he just went in there and took a rib and made her. I think I got that straight. I just looked at you to see what's off the track. <laughs> but oh, I don't let me get off the track. Keep it straight. I had woman come out of his side. And she used to walk by his side. Did you know some of these good women are walking right in those places where God put her. Right by the side of her husband. That's where she belongs. She comes from a rib. And Adam was created. He wasn't created. She was made. <laughs> the, the, rib, the rib was created. But I want to tell you, friends, somebody in here ought to stop praying for pardon, stop teaching it, and baptize men for pardon. On the day of Pentecost, about 3,000 were baptized, added to the church. Nobody prayed for nothing. We do the praying in the church. And that's what God wants it done, and not at the morning thing. We're going to have to learn this. And the quicker we learn it, and the quicker we unite on God's word, the quicker the world will understand the gospel of Christ. The purpose of the gospel. The reason God wants us to be made, he wants a new man. Every man coming into the world has to be another man made a new man. A new man in Christ. Another birth. Second birth makes you a new creature. At second birth, you're born in the world as a human being. Then I didn't get through with that Red Sea. I know there was reason I'm hanging around here so much. And they go back and finish this Red Sea crossing. And when they got over on the other side, the enemy come in there. Well, I don't know what the world I was thinking about. But anyway, when the enemy saw that hole in there, you know, the devil was gay. He didn't know who made the hole. He reached clean across and he plunged in there. And he hadn't been heard of since. God told Moses, now they're all in there. Hold your rod again. Waters came together. All that host of people destroyed with water. And if God can destroy a whole nation with water, he can destroy our sins with water. I got it that time. I know, I know this is the point I need to make. I know it is, and I wouldn't have had you to leave here without making this or nothing in the world. The whole thing was drowned with water. All my sins are moved away from there and canceled with water. Brethren, brethren, all our sins, everybody in the Church of Christ, I don't care who you are, you understood your sins were washed away. Our brethren preach it straight. They preach it straight. In baptism you rise to be baptized to wash your sins away. And if you haven't been baptized for that purpose, you are, according to the scriptures now, still in your sins. You've got to be baptized. What God says is far. Let me go over it again because you're looking right. 
and announced to old Saul of Tarsus arise. He was down praying. It made him stop. I wish every church would stop the sinner with the goes to praying and tell him what to do to get pardoned. Man down praying, he's so bothered to tell him. He's honest. He's sincere. But he's sincerely wrong. Rise and be baptized. And wash over your sins. Oh, how many people in here tonight. If you just bow to God's word the least bit, you'd be, you wouldn't leave the building until you were baptized to wash your sins away. And God then will do what? Add me to his church. Please, please, why not come? Why not bow? Why not you are dead enough to save the whole world? Why not surrender? Brother Keeble, I was baptized, but I didn't know what it was for. They didn't tell me. And now is the time to correct that mistake. Just correct it, and you'll always be happy. You'll always be glad you did correct it. Because you're doing it like God commands, that baptism according to Jesus Christ and the apostles washes my sins away. I know right where my sins were washed away. I know when they were washed away. I know what church he added me to. I know that God added to the church daily, such as should be dead. May God bless you, brother. And I believe somebody here tonight, brother, quite will obey the gospel. Somebody will listen to the truth. And somebody that's gone astray out in the world after obeying the gospel and backslidden will be returning tonight. Why not come? Don't bring disgrace on the church. Get in the church and live it so you won't call people, cause people to speak slightly of the church. You do that. Don't do that. Live a life so people can speak well of the church. Don't bring a reproach on the church of Christ. By drinking beer and whiskey, dipping snuff, all that stuff. Throw them boxes of snuff away to go out right here tonight. And did you know no good mother wants to show her girl how to smoke cigarettes? No good mother. A no good mother, real good Christian mother, wants that daughter to smoke cigarettes. I, I think the worst looking thing you've ever seen is a nice, clean looking young lady smoking cigarettes. Pitiful looking sight. The home should be the very place where God is. So the children can touch mother and touch father and get the inspiration of the church and all these things. And especially what I ask you as you Christians, please get that bottle of beer out of the fridge there. You'd be awful quiet. This is quieter than you've been in many years. I'm talking in the interest of the church. When I was preaching in San Bernardino, California, one white lady came forward one night and she said, Brother Keeble, after I got home, I suppose five or six bottles will be out of the fridge. I said, well, you showed me what I was doing and setting them children looking at that all the time. I, she told me that's raising drunk. It's you're tempting your children every day. Most every mother and father in here knows I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. I'm just warning you. That's all. I came here to do that. No doubt God guided the brother to call me so I could talk about these things. It makes him a better man. It makes all of us better to know the danger of these things. Christians, Christians, that's that our light shine. That our light shine before men that others may see our good works and glorify God. That's the only way to do it. And sometimes a preacher accidentally starts smoking too. He ain't fit to preach. Any preacher that smokes cigarettes and chews tobacco and any woman that dips snuff and everything, not fit to raise the children. I know what I'm talking about. You, someday you'll be glad that somebody touched on this. They're going to have to do it. I, I met a white lady not long ago up here at Linville, Tennessee. She said, I've been dipping snuff 50 years. I throwed the box away as I was leaving the tent. That's about three weeks ago. She come over to our stop just to tell me I throw it in the way if I was going up the street in the car. I'm allowed to do that tonight. So make a lot of people here throw them things away. I'm going to do it. I believe there's people in here who wants to be saved just as well as that lady did. A little old box of snuff, I wouldn't let it whip me. I'd whip it. And brother, you puff around you with these cigars and cigarettes in your mouth, whip that thing. Out the wind it goes. 
Don't take the church's money and buy those things. That's God's money. Amen. Amen, brother. I don't know who's smoking, but you're almighty quiet. <laughs> I don't know who he is. It doesn't matter. I don't have to know. It just preach the word. In season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort. With all long suffering and God. Brother, I, I, I'm the happiest I ever was in my life. I guess you can see that. I think I'm doing good. I think you all appreciate what I'm saying. Nobody's mad. Nobody mad in here. In my conclusion, is there one precious soul that'll give up the world, turn their back on the world, and come to Christ tonight and start a new life? A new life, a determination to keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's all we need to do. It's easy. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Brother, please remember those things and do that. Straighten it up tonight. Do it tonight. And you that are not having been baptized to wash your sins away, do it tonight. Do it away. That's the only way that you can get rid of your sin is in baptism. And then live a clean life the remainder of your days. I think I'm right. I think God would endorse everything I've said here tonight. I hope he does. And if he does, and I hope I see my mistake before it's too late. God bless all of you. God bless you. And somebody ready. Somebody waiting to confess Christ. Somebody willing to be buried with Christ. Somebody wants to become a Christian. If you do, while we stand, won't you come?